If you're building a Souls-like in Godot, your player code is going to explode the moment you add other states like rolling, attacks, stamina, things start to get overwhelming incredibly fast. So in this video, I'm going to show you a clean foundation, a simple state machine. By the end, you'll understand what a state machine is, and you'll have a working setup in Godot 4.6 with a state machine brain, a base state, an idle state, and a move state. A state machine is just a system that says your player is always in one state at a time. Idle is one state and move is another state. And a transition is just a rule that decides when to switch. So instead of one giant script full of if statements, each state owns its own behavior. To make this work, we need a brain. The brain does two jobs. It runs the current state every frame and it switches states when we tell it to. Now let's code that brain. Here's our state machine script. It stores the current state. It has a function called change state and every physics frame, it calls a physics update on the current state. That's literally the core. Now in Godot, add a child under your player called state machine, attach this script. Nothing will happen yet because we don't have any states. So next, we need to define what a state will look like. Every state should follow the same contract. When we enter a state, we might reset the variables. While we're in a state, we run the state logic. When we exit, we might want to clean some things up. So every state will get enter, exit, and physics update. This is base state. It doesn't do anything by itself. It just defines the functions that every state will have. Create base state.gd in your project. Now we can create our first real state, idle. Idle state is simple. While we're idle, we check for movement input, and if input exists, we transition to move. Here's the code. Read input. If the input magnitude is greater than zero, tell the state machine to switch to move. In Godot, create idle state and attach the script. And we pass the references it needs, the player, and the state machine. Now let's look at the move state. Move state does two things. One, it applies movement while there's input. And two, if input stops, well, we wanna go back to idle. This is move state. If there's no input, switch back to idle. If there is input, call the player's movement function. Now, this is an important rule. The player owns the movement math. The state decides when it's allowed. Now hit play and you should see the state switching live. Idle, move, idle. And that's a working state machine foundation. Now you understand what a state machine is and you have a working brain in Godot 4.6. This is the exact foundation that you build a Souls-like controller on. And that's it. You now have a working state machine in Godot 4.6. A brain that tracks states, a contract that every state follows, the two real states wired up, and switching live. This is the exact foundation you build a Souls-like controller on. But obviously, a Souls-like character has way more than just idle and move. You've got rolling, attack, hit reactions, maybe die states. And each of those states has a lot more logic than what we covered. Animation handling, timers, combo windows, stamina checks, and more complicated math that makes things feel smoother. There's also things like input controllers. Instead of repeating input.getVector and input is action pressed, in every single state, you create one input controller that reads all the inputs, and every state just reads from that. Cleaner code, easier to debug, and it makes things like input buffering way simpler. If you want to learn all this, the full state machine architecture, all the combat states, input controllers, animation state machines, stuff like that, I've got a complete guided course on my website. It walks you through building the whole thing step by step over to almost 21 lessons and you get the full project files at the end. Check it out at codingquest.io. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.